Hey, in this video, I want to talk to you about a very, very important topic. The topic is toxic shame, which is the most negative emotion that humans can experience. And many people really struggle with this emotion that it becomes like a chronic state of being. And what I want to talk about in this video is how this happens, what happens when you feel that shame and how to work with it because it is one of the the most negative lowest vibrational emotions we can experience right and i think it affects a lot of people i really do i think it affects a lot of people who struggle with addiction a lot of mental health problems if you were to really get underneath a lot of these problems you're going to find a lot of unresolved emotional stuff let's call it and toxic shame is one of these dark emotions that kind of lingers deep in your subconscious, deep in your soul, right? So I've been doing a lot of growth work as I, as I always do. And the more I dig into myself, the deeper I go, the more of this like emotional stuff that I find. And I think a lot of people find this stuff, stuff that's been down there probably for decades, right? Just layer upon layer, all these negative experiences you've had where you didn't feel good, all that emotional stuff was just getting laid and laid on top of it. So when you come to heal that stuff, you've got to go through it, right? It's like you've literally got a shovel and you're just trying to like dig your way out or see what's at the bottom of all of this stuff. And you're going to find a lot of painful, dark shit like shame, which, like I said, is probably the most negative, low vibrational emotion that humans experience but it is a normal human emotion as well if you're familiar with um, Hawkins's scale of consciousness I'll put on the screen here quickly you'll see on the bottom of that the lowest emotional state even he says it's shame right and for that reason it's probably one of the hardest emotions to work through and really what this emotion makes you feel it makes you feel like like you're bad you're just an inherently bad person, right? You might not even recognize how it's making you feel if you've got like chronically stuck feeling that emotion. So little things might trigger you and you'll just feel bad, right? And because it's chronic and you felt it for so long, you don't see it. For those people who are chronically stuck in this shame state, you're going to have to do a lot of work on this. People who've had a lot of trauma will probably have a lot of unresolved shame underneath that trauma, right? Like I said, I think people who have a lot of addiction, a lot of addictive tendencies, whether it's pornography, alcohol, whatever, I think there's a lot of shame underneath all of that, all of these negative conditions, right? Because what the addiction is really, the addiction's an escape, because that emotion of shame, it makes you feel like you're a bad person. You feel bad just about yourself, right? deep, deep down. So what the addiction does is the addiction allows us to escape that bad feeling, right? We escape it into something, something that feels good, some type of pleasure. So that's all we're doing with addictions is we're trying to get away from something we don't want to feel. And like I said, I think for a lot of people, there's a lot of unresolved shame down there. And so you've got to start to understand how to work with this, which I'm going to get to. Before I get to that, I just want to share with you some interesting physiology, some neurophysiology that I've learned recently, which I think is so interesting. So when you're feeling shame or ashamed or even embarrassed, you could put all these under the same category, you're pretty much powerless in that state. You must understand this. You can't override that state with your conscious mind. You just, you just can't do it. The reason you can't do it is because when you feel shame or embarrassed or any, any of these conditions, your limbic system, which is a part of your nervous system, a more primitive part of you, gets triggered, it gets activated. And the limbic system is like, it's a very primitive part of the human being. It's like the lizard brain, right? And lizards were, uh, were around before human beings, right? So that part of you has more power than the human part of you. The human part of you is the, the prefrontal cortex, right? The more evolved part, the logical thinking brain. 
But your logical thinking brain can't do anything when that limbic system's been triggered. When that limbic system's triggered, that's when you go into fight or flight, right? You're in a survival, you're under survival stress. And one thing I've learned about shame is that it triggers this fight or flight response in the limbic system. And when that's triggered, you want to release, you want to relieve it. That's when you're more likely to try to escape it through some sort of addiction, right? You hate feeling that way. And I understand evolutionarily, this was actually some type of survival mechanism. It was healthy for people to feel shame. So they wouldn't fuck other people over in the tribe, right? You can't just have people like going against each other when we need to live in tribes to increase our chances of survival. So naturally we developed this sense of shame. So we didn't do things wrong. So we didn't like wrong people. Because underneath that shame, another thing I've learned is the the desire to belong, right? So anytime you feel there's a possibility that you're going to be rejected, you're going to feel like you're bad, you're going to feel shame. So really all you're seeking is love and acceptance, deep, deep down. So maybe in your past at some point, you didn't get some love and acceptance that you needed, right? That's probably where this condition comes from. You had some negative experiences, made you feel like you weren't lovable, and then you maybe started to feel that you were just bad. And so this kind of toxic shame started to build up in your system. You started to identify with it. You developed, at least subconsciously, a self-image around you just being a bad person who's not lovable. And bringing it back to the, the neurophysiology I was sharing... When that limbic system's triggered, it knocks out the light in the prefrontal cortex, which is, like I said, the logical thinking part of your brain. So, for example, you might get rejected by someone. An innocent rejection. You could have one person who's not strongly under the influence of toxic shame and a person that is. They could both get rejected. The person who, who's pretty much free of toxic shame might feel a bit of sting of the rejection, but they move past it. The person who's like under this toxic shame might actually start to feel like I'm a bad person. I got rejected. Oh my God, I'm such a bad person. Just feel bad to the core, right? Because that logical thinking part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, it gets, the, the lights go out on it. It gets knocked out. It switches off almost because the limbic system, the, the fight or flight system's activated, right? You feel under threat. Your survival's at risk. At least that's how you internalize it. So you can try with all your might to try to make sense of it, but it's not going to calm down that primitive part of you, if that makes sense. So we've got to find ways of working with this that keep our prefrontal cortex online, right? Because this part of your brain, I keep pointing in here because it's the front part of your brain, it's the most evolved part of your brain, this part of your brain isn't just like logical and rational, which obviously it is, but it also helps you regulate your emotions better. And because shame is such a powerful emotion, we need all of our brain to kind of w regulate it, right? And when you develop this part of your mind, slowly, you will be able to dampen its effects, which will help you kind of be more free, right? Because when shame is running your life, it's not a very nice thing, right? You're afraid of very, you're afraid of just doing little things in case it goes wrong. You might become a perfectionist because you desperately need everything to be perfect, right? This is all symptoms of shame, right? So if you're working with bad addictions, I really think you need to start to heal this emotional wound. So now let me get to this healing part of it. This is very, very powerful. I've been practicing it. I've been trying it. I think this is the most effective way to work with all emotion. There's three stages to it. I'll take you through each one of them. First one is, as always, it's awareness. You need to become hyper aware of when you're triggered, right? I have a video called The Power of Self-Observation. You should be observing yourself a lot of the time, right? So even when there's a small emotional trigger lingering in the background, you want to get to a place where you can recognize even lingering emotions in the background, right? It takes time, but 
But as you begin to observe yourself, first of all, you recognize the big ones. Slowly over time, you begin to recognize the ones in the background, right? And when you start to recognize the ones in the background, that's when you're really growing in awareness. That's when you're really going to start to take your power back over them. It's almost like you're a ninja or something and you can just detect things in the silence, right? And you spot them. You're literally just spotting stuff a mile off. Because when you can spot it, when it's in the background, you can deal with it before it like enters your full consciousness and it completely takes over. So you must be practicing self-awareness, self-observation. That's the first stage. If you can't even recognize when you're triggered or you're completely lost in it, you can still pull it back. But if you can catch it before that happens, you're in a much better state and you won't have to suffer as much. And so the second part of this, again, very important, is to understand that all emotions are a human experience. Even toxic shame. Everybody, every human being experiences the full range of emotions at some point in their life, right? Now, you might be chronically stuck in shame, right? I'm not saying everybody's chronically stuck there. But come to accept the fact or the idea that everyone experiences what you're experiencing at some time or another, right? It'll really connect you to your humanity, right? And it just, that connection to humanity helps you understand or at least feel that you're not alone. What you're going through is actually a part of life. Suffering is a part of life. I'm going to make a separate video on this because it's, it's a topic of its own. But suffering and life are inseparable, right? And if you can really understand that and really know that other people experience whatever you're experiencing, right? It humanizes it. It makes you feel, just relieves some of that tension. So that's the second thing is understand that what you're going through is a human experience. Humans experience this. There's nothing different about you, right? Even though it feels like you're the only one suffering, you're not. And then the third and final stage, which is just so powerful, it's self-compassion. You literally need to be compassionate with yourself any time you're under these negative emotions. The last time I, the last thing I heard about compassion, like I've been researching it a lot, there's been like 3,000 studies done on self-compassion. It's so powerful. It's almost like you have to just be there for yourself, like you would be there for a kid. Be kind to yourself. It really comes from like Buddhist meditation, Buddhist mindfulness. That's really where this practice is born from. I think it's probably been around for thousands of years, right? You're really just soothing yourself. You're being kind to yourself. When you do this over time, you develop emotional resilience, right? So anytime you feel that negative state, you go inward, you're kind to yourself, and you can recover from it much quicker. This is really something you should have got when you were growing up, right? If you had healthy parenting, they would have done this for you. Then it would have just become kind of subconscious. You would have just known how to soothe yourself because someone mirrored it to you. But if you didn't have anyone to do that for you, guess what? You can do it for yourself. And when you can bounce back from emotional setbacks quite quickly because you know how to soothe yourself... That's when you become quite powerful because life is going to be a lot of emotional setbacks. Like I said, life has a lot of suffering. But if you know how to ride that suffering, if you know how to keep bouncing back, because you can literally soothe the wound, soothe the pain instead of getting lost in it, then what can stop you, right? You become very tenacious. You become someone who can just keep moving forward because you can deal with the knockbacks. It's not just about bulldozing past everything and over everything. It's learning how to get hit with something negative and then how to kind of work through it and bounce back quicker. Not just forget it or suppress it or ignore it. That's going to lead to further problems. So you've got to try self-compassion. There's some good books out there, a lot of good meditations out there. Try all of these things. And... This is the best way to work through this toxic emotion, shame. And I think any negative emotion. Practice this awareness. Your common humanity and 
self-compassion and see how it goes right but that's everything i've got to talk about in a video hope you enjoyed it i hope it helped you out thank you and god bless